And now that we know exactly what SharePoint framework is, the next step is to configure our local development workspace to be able to build and deploy SharePoint framework solutions. One of the greatest aspects of SharePoint Framework, in my opinion, is the fact that it utilizes almost entirely open source software, meaning no matter what operating system or applications that you prefer to use, you can get up and running with building SharePoint Framework solutions in no time. We're going to use a handful of applications throughout this series to be able to build and deploy and test all the solutions that we're going to be working with. And first of all, you are going to need a terminal application to be able to run the scripts and deployment processes that are available in SharePoint Framework. In this case, we're going to be using Hyper. You can download this on any operating system at hyper.is, but you can always feel free to utilize whichever terminal application you prefer. We're also going to be doing quite a bit of code editing throughout the series, and if you haven't checked it out yet, I would highly recommend Microsoft's very own Visual Studio Code, which is available at code. Dot visualstudio.com. Not only is this a really great code editor in its own right, but it also has a really great extension marketplace that allows you to customize your developer experience to be just the right thing for you. And in the Visual Studio code that you're going to be seeing throughout the series, we do have several extensions installed. And at the very least, I would highly recommend that you install the ECMAScript or ESLint extension. There's also a TypeScript linter called TSLint, and there is a SAS linter called SASLint. And on my particular installation of Visual Studio Code, I have quite a few other extensions and themes configured for a full list of all the settings, configuration, and extensions that you're going to see in the editor throughout the series. Just scroll down to the video description below, and you'll find links to all of those different extensions and configuration settings that we have set up. You probably already have this installed, but you do also need to have Node.js. And if you haven't done this already, just head on over to nodejs.org and download the latest long-term support version, which as of this recording is version 8.12. We are going to be building SharePoint framework solutions, and therefore you should have some sort of SharePoint environment in which you can test your work. You may already have an Office 365 environment through your employer or whatever organization you're working with. And if so, that is probably the best place to get started in setting up your SharePoint online environment. If not, then you do have a couple of options. You can either purchase your own Office 365 subscription, which runs about 15 bucks a month for the enterprise version of that. Or you can sign up for Microsoft's Office 365 developer program, in which case you will get an online tenant in which you can work. And in order to do this, you can check this out at developer.microsoft.com or just follow the link in the video description down below. And jumping into the terminal, we do need to install a couple of packages globally on our machine to be able to build our first SharePoint framework solution. And we're going to do this using the npm or node package manager command, and that has an install command or i. And we're going to need to install these globally, so we're going to use the dash g flag in this case. We want to install three packages that we're going to need globally on this environment, and those packages are gulp, yeoman or yo, and a yeoman generator called at Microsoft slash generator SharePoint. Hey everybody, important update I wanted to insert into this video in the course. I've gotten some feedback from several students indicating that they are running into some errors as they go through the course and I looked into it and the reason is because whenever you install this generator SharePoint package dependency, um, the course when it was recorded was actually installed at version 1.6 and there's actually new versions of SharePoint Framework out now which we do have update videos at the end of the course that are going to tell you how to upgrade to those newer versions and go over all the new features and stuff in the, the latest version of SharePoint Framework. But the problem you may run into is if you use the latest version right off the bat because we recorded in 1.6 there's a few very minor like build errors and kind of linting issues that you might run into because they actually use a new version of TypeScript in the later versions of SharePoint Framework, which is a pretty big change to the 
internals of the build process, which just means that it, it's going to yell at you for like commas that you put in or semicolons that you're missing or something like that. And it just, it's generally more picky. Um, and if you follow the course exactly as it is without installing version 1.6, like you're seeing me do here, then you may run into some of those errors. So what I would highly recommend if you don't want to spend some time debugging is go ahead and um, even though in this video, you're going to see me install the latest, but just add this at 1.6 onto the end of this command. And that will explicitly install that same version that you're going to see throughout the course. You're going to, you shouldn't run into any issues. Everything's going to work great. And then at the end of the course, you can go through those update videos and learn how to upgrade to the latest version of SharePoint Framework. So go ahead and uh, run this command now. And again, you're going to see me in the course kind of running the latest on everything, but this will make sure that you're in sync with the recordings as you go through everything. And when you run this command, it's going to install all three of those packages globally. It will take a few moments to get started, so let's let that run. And with that, we have everything installed and configured that we need to build our very first SharePoint framework solution. So in the very next video, we will get started in our terminal and in Visual Studio Code in building a SharePoint framework web part.